Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first guided assignment. Uh, the way the guided assignments work is uh, I'm just going to work the problem out, and you can work the problem out too. Um, and you get full credit. So all you have to do is kind of follow along with me. You may have different numbers on yours. Um, it's a good chance to sort of figure out how um, Cengage works so that you're, you're more comfortable with it and to learn a little bit that will help you with the uh, assignments in the class. Uh, there'll be one for each chapter, a guided assignment, um, where we work it out together. Um, in a face-to-face -face class, of course, we would just work it out in class, but here in an online class, um, this is what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So th this is a list of transactions, um, April 1st of 2018 or 28. That Y just means uh, it, it, you could insert whatever there fits, I guess. Um, Maria Adams established custom realty. Maria completed the following transactions during the month of April. And then it gives us a list of transactions and tells us to indicate the effect of each transaction on the balances after each transaction. All right. So for the first one, it says they opened a business bank account and deposited $24,000 in exchange for common stock. So I'm going to look at each of these accounts and say, okay, if, if I put $24,000 into my business, the cash is going to increase by $24,000. And the common stock account, which just represents money contributed to the business by the owners. Um, now for these guided assignments, you have unlimited checks and unlimited submissions. Um, so if we want, we can check. It's annoying because it goes all the way down to the bottom. It checks everything, but we can see the check marks saying we did it right. Remember uh, the, the basics of this the fundamental accounting equation is that assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. So anything we put on the assets side has to equal anything on the liabilities and stockholder equity side. That's our first sort of check to make sure what we're doing is right. So let's look at the second transaction. We paid rent on office equipment for the month of $3,600. So paying rent would make my cash go down. Um, and then it would be a, a cost of doing business, which is also called an expense. So I'm gonna put negative 3,600. Again, I have a transaction on this side of the equal sign, whoops, right here, that equals a transaction on that side. And then this starts to become a pain as we do more and more of these, but we have to do a balance. So I'd say 24,000 minus 3,600 is 20,400. The balance of our stock count, 24,000, no change. So it's still 24,000 and our rent expense is negative 3,600. Again, I can check it each time if I want to. Um, I can also move forward and just do a bunch of them and then check them all at once because you have unlimited checks on these guided assignments. All right, so I'm gonna go on to C, paid automobile expense for the month of 1350 and miscellaneous expense of 300. So I paid a total then of 1,950 or 1350 plus 600. So my cash went down 1950. And that's going to be an automobile expense and a miscellaneous expense. We can do our balances. That should be what? 18,450. We want we can check our work and we're good so i'm going to do a several here now without checking the work and we'll check them at the end even if i make a mistake since the, the checks don't hurt my grade or anything sometimes it's valuable i learn a lot when i make a mistake and have to correct it um, so i purchased supplies on account for 1200 so on account is tricky because it sounds like you're you're buying these but on account means you didn't pay cash instead you you usually the supplier, the person selling you the accounts will just be like, hey, pay us in 30 days or whatever. That's pretty normal in business. So I'm gonna say my supplies increased by $1,200 and my accounts payable, that's money I owe to somebody else also increased, like a debt that I owe. So then my balances, 
18,450 will just come straight down because we didn't change cash. 1,200, 1,200. All right, E, earned sales commissions receiving cash of 19,800. So my cash increased by 19,800. And that's gonna be recorded over here as a revenue called sales commissions. So 18,450 plus 19,800 is 38,250. So again, each time there's no change to a column, we just bring the balance, the previous balance down. F, paid a creditor on account, 750. So this is money I owe. So when it says we're paying on account, it means we're paying our accounts payable, okay? So if I pay 750, my cash goes down by 750 my accounts payable is going to go down by 750. That's 750 less that I owe the creditor now. So 38,250 minus 750 is 37,500. 1,200 minus 750 is 450. All right, G, we paid our office salaries of 2,500. So our cash will go down by 2,500. Oops. And our salaries expense will also be a negative 2,500. All right, our balance, 37,500 minus 2,500 is 35,000. Just bring these ones down because they haven't changed. I mean, if you think about it, all we're doing when we do accounting is we are looking at each transaction, how it affects the balances of the of the or how it affects the accounts, and then figuring out the new balance of the account each time. So H paid dividends of thirty five hundred. Dividends are paid in cash in this case. That's going to be a negative thirty five hundred to cash. Dividends will be negative thirty five hundred. Now our new balances. And the last transaction determined the cost of supplies on hand was 300. Therefore the cost of supplies used was 900. So supplies, we don't count them as an expense until we use them up. So. Um, we're going to say our supplies went down then by 900 and our supplies expense was 900. We find our new balances. And unless I made a mistake, which is very possible, this all should be right. So we're gonna check our work. Scroll up and see if I made any errors. Looks like I'm good. Um, and so you can do the same thing. You can go through those and, uh, and get each of those. So these are the balances of our accounts at the end of the month after all of those transactions. This represents our balances after all of the transactions have been figured in. So now it wants us to prepare an income statement. An income statement summarizes our revenues, that's money we brought in, and our expenses, money we've paid out. So that's gonna be these over here, um, our sales commissions or our revenues, and then all these expenses are our money we've paid out. So we'll start here and we'll say sales commissions, 
And then for our expenses, we had rent expense, salary expense, auto expense, supply expense, and miscellaneous expense. So we'll say rent expense, automobile expense, oh, salaries expense, automobile expense, uh, supplies expense, and miscellaneous expenses. And we know that our revenue, sales commissions, minus our expenses is called our net income. Uh, unless we have more expenses than we had revenue, then that's going to be a net loss. All right, so I'm just going to scroll up here and look at our sales commissions was 19,800. So that's where I'm getting this information from right here. The balance of our sales commissions at the end of the month. And then we're going to look at each of these expenses. Rent expense was 3,600. Salary expense was 2,500. Here's one little note for you. Uh, even though we show them as negatives here, when we do them on our income statement, we always show everything as a positive. That's just how they do it. That's the standard convention. Our automobile, automobile expense was 1350. Our supplies expense was 900. And our miscellaneous expense was 600. So we're gonna add all those up to get our total expenses. 3,600 plus 2,500 plus. So $8,950. And then our sales commissions minus our total expenses. So 19,800 minus 8,950. That's gonna give us our net income. So our net income, whoops is simply the revenue, money we brought in minus the expenses. So that's the amount of money we made. If we we're a business, that's what we made for the month. So I'm gonna go ahead and check my work. And it looks like I got it all right. So step three says, prepare a statement of stockholders equity for April. If the amount was zero, enter zero. If a net loss incurred or dividends were paid, enter that amount as a negative number using a minus sign. So we're kind of just, we're gonna start the beginning of the month on April. Remember, this was a brand new business. So when it started, it had zero common stock and zero retained earnings. Then right off the bat, our first transaction was that we issued common stock. And how much was that? It was $24,000. So we're gonna show our common stock goes up by 24,000. There's still no retained earnings. So our total will be 24,000. Then we made net income and net income will increase our retained earnings. So it doesn't affect our common stock but our net income, which we can find right up here on our income statement of 10,850, that increases our retained earnings. Then we paid a dividend. We can look back up here where we paid $3,500 in dividends. So dividends reduce the amount of retained earnings a business has. And now we're just gonna total these up. So our balance at the end of the month is gonna be 24,000 in common stock. What would that be? 7,350 in retained earnings um, and 30, 24, 32, 350, 31, 350 is the total. Could have just used my calculator, right? But sometimes we get lazy. Let's see if getting lazy hurt me. Nope, I did it right in my head that time. So there's our stock, our statement of stockholders equity. We can see at the beginning of the period, we had zero. At the end of the period, we had 24,000 in common stock, 7,350 in retained earnings for a total of 31,350. So the last thing we want to do is create a balance sheet. And the balance sheet is going to summarize our assets, our liabilities, and our stockholders' equity. 
So if we scroll back up, up here, we can see our only two assets were cash and supplies. Our only liability was accounts payable. And our only stockholders equity at the, at the end is common stock and retained earnings. All of these items here, they are all part of retained earnings. Dividends reduces retained earnings, revenues increase it, expenses decrease it, okay? So all I have to really do is look at the balances of each of these at the end of the month. So for assets, I have cash and supplies. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this out. I have cash, and I have supplies. For liabilities, I have accounts payable. And for stockholders equity, I have common stock and retained earnings. And I can just scroll up here, look at the balances. Cash has 31,500. Supplies has 300. So my total assets are 31,500 plus 300 or 31,800. My liability account, accounts payable, has a balance of 450. And then I can find the stockholders equity summarized right here above where I did my statement of stockholders equity. I can see common stock has a balance of 24,000. Retained earnings has a balance of 7,350. And if I add those two together, the total is 31,350. Finally, I'm gonna add my liabilities with my total stockholders equity, 31,350 plus 450 comes out to 31,800. And then I'm gonna compare those. My total assets should equal my total liabilities and stockholders equity. They do, which means I'm in balance. And so if I want, I can check my work. You see, that's all right. And once I have it all checked and I know it's all right and the way I want it, I can submit the assignment. It's gonna say, warning, are you sure you wanna do this? and I'm gonna submit it. And yay, I got 100%. So that was our first guided assignment. I hope it was valuable for you and I hope it prepares you to be successful on the homework uh, or the individual assignment. So good luck and as always, don't be afraid to reach out. I'm available via email or text message um, and uh, we can help you get through this.